Hey, welcome back to my lectures for Introduction to Psychology. We're now in series seven of my lectures, and today we're going to talk about vision, sight. How is it that you see the world as you see it? So we'll talk about um, how you detect things, how you, your visual system adapts, the different parts of your eyes and how they produce different kinds of blindness. Um, and then we'll talk about color perception. But I need to start this lecture with some terms, and those are sensation and perception. Two different processes, they both happen all the time. Sensation is when the receptors in your eyes, in your ears, in your nose, in your mouth, in your skin, when they detect something from the outside world. So it's the encoding of information from the outside world. It's when uh, the food gets converted into action potentials that your brain can understand. Okay, that's sensation. Perception is the next stage. And perception is when you make sense of that information that's coming in. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, imagine a camera that takes a picture. The taking of the picture is sensation. But looking at the picture and saying, oh, that's Uncle Bob and that's Aunt Susie, that's perception. It's making sense of it, figuring out what parts of the image go together and what they mean. Um, I've got a, a fun drawing from a, a wonderful professor of mine, uh, Roger Shepard, who's Professor Emeritus at Stanford University. And it shows you the difference between sensation and perception, or maybe more importantly, in the importance of perception. This seems like a normal elephant, but look at its feet. How many legs does that elephant have? You can't tell, can you? Yeah. That's perception, the understanding, the interpreting of input. Now, you might wonder, why do we even need a stage of perception? I mean, don't we just record whatever is out there in the world? What's the problem? Well, here's the problem, and, it, and honestly, it's sort of hard for us to wrap our brains around because we live with the illusion that we perceive the world as it actually is. Um, but that isn't what happens. Sensory information, for reasons that you'll find out later, is incomplete. It's ambiguous. So you have to use your brain to interpret that information. So what your brain does is it reconstructs or builds a model of the outside world in your brain. And that model has to deal with ambiguities. And it's built to do that. And the way it does that is your brain uses your expectations, your prior experiences, your knowledge of the world, to help you interpret the sensory information. So perception involves assumptions, okay? Um, so for example, I have a, a fun um, drawing here, painting of a farm scene. Um, there's a couple of sheep and some uh, houses in the background. But if you look at it um, from a distance, it looks like a old man's head. He's got a big mustache. Um, he's not there, right? But we perceive him to be there. Why? Because we're great at face perception. We have a ton of experience looking at other people's faces. Um, part of that is a result of the fact that we are born um, unable to care for ourselves. We need other people to take care of us. Um, we need other people in every step of our lives. I could never create or present these lectures without other people designing computers and figuring out how the internet works and YouTube. So we are social animals, which means we need to be really great at perceiving other people. So here's a couple of pictures of uh, a person, actually um, two people, and you look at that picture and they look okay. And then below that you see, probably you see two words, the cat. Now you're probably wondering why I'm even showing you these pictures. There seems to be nothing special about them. 
But let me show you those two pictures of the faces. And all I'm doing here is taking those faces and turning them so the face is upright the way we usually see it. And when those faces are upright, you can see, oh my goodness, those faces are very strange. Those faces were created by taking the eyes, cutting them out, a picture of the eyes and cutting them out, a picture of the mouth and cutting that out, and then flipping it upside down. When the faces are upright, you can see when the eyes and the mouth are upside down. But when the pictures, when the faces are upside down, you can't tell. I mean, now that you know, you can see there's something a little funny, but you can't see them as really strange. Why is that? Because how we perceive things depends on all sorts of things, one of them being context and one of them being experience. You have a lifetime of experiences with faces that are in this upright position. You have almost no experience with faces that are upside down. So your visual system has developed a lot of expertise with upright faces and no expertise with upside down faces. So in upside down faces, we're just terrible at perceiving what's there. Now, I also said context is important, and that's where the cat comes in. If you'll notice, um, the center letter in both words is actually the same shape. When that shape is surrounded by the letters T and E, it looks like an H to us. When that letter is surrounded by a C and a T, that letter looks like the letter A to us. Both perceiving it as an H and an A aren't exactly accurate, but that's what we see because we use what's around those shapes to interpret the shapes. Okay, come right back and we'll talk about how do you know if something's really there.